Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today I'm going to show you how to draw this squirrel on a branch. We're going to be using ink pens and graphite pencils. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's drawing lesson. You're going to need a piece of paper. I'm using a Strathmore Visual Journal pad. It's Bristol Smooth and it's 9 by 12 inches. You'll also need the stencil if you want to use it, and you can download that. I've put a, li a link in the description below. And if you need to know how to transfer your stencil onto your canvas, I also have a link in the description below that shows you how to do that. I have my graphite pencils. I've got an HB, a 2B, a 4B, and this is called Extra Black. It's the equivalent of a 6B. I also have some Staedtler pigment liner pens, ink pens, with various sizes, and I will list in the description below which ones I end up using. I also have these Winsor Newton ink pens. They're all 0 0.8 tip, um, but I have a bunch of them here. You might notice I have masking tape on some of them. That be, that's because the ink has been running out on them and I don't have any more of these so I might be switching between a bunch of those. So if you see me using one with masking tape or without, they're all the same 0 0.8 but I will tell you what I'm using as I go along. I also have some erasers, these mechanical erasers. This is a Tombow Mono. It's got that tiny little eraser tip and this is a Factus BM2 uh, mechanical eraser. It's got a, a thicker tip at the end. This is going to be for highlighting and erasing, of course. I have just an old dollar store paintbrush that I use to brush off eraser bits and dust from my page. I have some blending tools. My big bucket of blending tools. <laughs> I have some blending stumps, some tortillon blenders. I have these soft foam tip blenders that work really well with graphite, especially HB. I also have, I'm just letting you know what I have. I don't know if I'm going to use them, but I have these dollar store paint brushes as well. But again, I'll list it in the description below after I've done so that you know what to have to be prepared. And I've got some cotton swabs that I'm not sure I'm going to use. And lastly, I've got a piece of wax paper that I put on my page so that I don't smudge my hand all over the drawing. So let's begin. This is a photo that I actually took so I can show it. <laughs> In a lot of my drawing lessons, I do drawings of uh, images I found on the internet or of celebrities and portraits. And for copyright purposes, I can't show the actual reference photo, but this time I can. And the link to the reference photo is also in the description below. So I always suggest if you're doing a drawing that um, that you want to look somewhat realistic, always have a reference photo and get used to as you're drawing along, you know, as you're drawing along, stop for a second, look at your reference photo and see where the shading is, where the highlighting is, where the darkest areas are, what you need to leave light, etc. For this stencil, I've basically done the bare minimum just to give me an outline. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this lesson and away we go. I'm starting with my 0 0.8 fine liner because that's the darkest I have. The wider the tip, I find the darker the pen, the ink pen. So I'm just going to outline a few areas as I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm going to give an outline to I'm saying his left ear because it's left to me, but that's his right ear. But let's let's just assume that we're talking about what we see in front of us. So his left ear here, I'm outlining. And I'm going to outline with lines this way, this triangle that I had put on top, because that represents the uh, inside of his tail. And I don't want to draw a triangle per se because his tail is, is very wispy, if you look at the reference photo. And the inside of his tail is darker than the outside. 
So here too, I'm just going to put some, just some lines to make it look like fur. I'm also going to outline the right ear and the inside part here from my stencil. Now as for his eyes, I'm going to outline the entire area that I drew on the stencil for both eyes. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just went outside of my line, but it really doesn't matter. All right. And like I said, once again, I am looking at my reference photo. So at this point, I'm going to outline his nose. And his mouth. He actually looks like he's smiling in this photo. The only thing I'm going to outline now, I believe, is going to be the branch that he's sitting on. And I'm going to fine tune that later. But I'll outline it now. The whole branch. This little spot down here is the back of his foot. So I'm going to outline that too. And I'm bringing it up to the branch. Okay, just doing the rest of the branch here. And the other dark areas are his, um, his nails, actually. So I'm just going to go to the tips of each of his paws and just outline the ends here. Because those are quite dark. You'll notice if you um, if you look at the reference photos that I left links for you to uh, check out. I've left a color one and a black and white one. I've desaturated the photo so that it makes it easier to see the shading and it makes it easier to see the highlighting. Once I could, I could actually draw this from the actual color reference photo, but if you're just kind of starting out and you want to see, we're working in black and white, so why not turn the photo into a black and white photo. It just makes it that much easier. When I'm working with ink and graphite, I always like to start by outlining what I need to with my darkest ink pen. And then I usually go to my lightest graphite, which is HB. So I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm going to fill in the areas that are the lightest on the squirrel. So I'm just going to grab my wax paper here and the lightest areas are on his face, under his eye, and under his nose. Just around one side of his nose. And this whole area here that I outlined, I'm filling that in with HB. I turn my pencil once in a while to make sure that it doesn't wear down all on one side. And I'm not pressing very hard. I'm drawing in little ovals and little circles. Okay, and probably the top of his head here pretty light. There's a very white area around his eye, which I'm going to leave white for now. But if 
at any time I get any graphite in there, I can always erase it. The white goes all the way over here. The light area, I mean, not the white. On the, the reference photo, it, it looks white, but I don't like to leave things just white and black. I, I like to do shading. Right under his arm here. And this whole area here, the side of him is lighter than the rest. The whole area. Except for his paws, they're a little darker, so we'll, we won't touch those for now. This paw too. Actually, this paw is pretty light. Okay, we've got here, his paw up till about halfway down his fingers, it's pretty light. I'm just going to take my 0 0.8 again and I forgot a little bit of the branch here in between his paws. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take my 4B and I'm going to fill in the rest of him except for the really dark areas like his ears and his paws. The inside of his ear, there's a little lighter spot and I'm going to fill in that, that area that I outlined here. But like I said, the rest of his fur, I'm going to fill in with 4B. And we can go in and put detail in after. We just want to get the basic sort of uh, background color, not color, background shading. I guess we could call it the underdrawing. Turning my pencil once in a while. I believe I met this squirrel when I lived on Prince Edward Island for a year. There was a really lovely walking path there and there were so many squirrels. Lots of birds too and rabbits. And I did a lot of photography back then. I don't do so much now and I probably should. Especially, you know, being an artist and I'm just sorry I couldn't grab my HB again because this area is a little light as well. I'm going to leave it a little open around his mouth but this area here was a little wider. Yeah especially when I'm doing drawings it's okay to you know see images on the internet and but it's kind of nice to be able to show a reference photo once in a while too. This whole area here is darker. The great thing about doing drawings with graphite is you can erase it. I do a lot of charcoal drawings and they're very difficult to erase once you have the charcoal on your canvas. Leaving his paws like that. This is his little foot in the back here. All right. Now for the branch, I'm just going to fill it all in with 2B. The whole thing, just with 2B. And we'll come in and we'll put detail in after. Like I said, this is just the under drawing to get a layer of graphite on there. 
be careful not to get his the paws his fingers that we left um, white But if you do get some graphite in those areas, don't worry, it can be erased. Now I'm just going to take my darkest pencil, which is my extra black, but like I said, it's the equivalent of a 6B, and I'm going to fill in his tail. I'm also filling in his ears. Turning my pencil. All right, you'll notice on his left eye, there's a little circle there. I want to keep that white, but the rest is pretty dark. Same thing here. This area around is white. I want to leave that white, but there's a spot in his eye here that I want to keep white as well. But like I said before, if you get graphite in there, don't worry too much. We can always erase it. His nose is quite black as well. And his little smile. <laughs> All right. The tips of his We'll pause here, his little fingers are dark. Okay, so we filled in basically all of the under drawing. I'm going to take my soft foam tip blender. The brand is soft, S-O-F-F-T. If you don't have one of these, you can use a blending stump. I'm not sure how well the uh, cotton swabs will work. They work well for the HB, but not so much the other colors. You could try, you know, you just don't want to press down too hard. The, it, because the if you use the cotton swabs, you can you can see your your drawing marks sometimes. With this soft foam tip blender, it really blends graphite very well. And I don't mind if I'm getting graphite outside of the squirrel because I am actually going to fill in the entire background with HB at some point. And you see what I did? I just got graphite into that area where I said I wanted to keep it white. But that's what erasers are for. <laughs> just filling in the whole thing not filling in I'm blending the whole thing it blends very very well and you're not you know you there are some areas that we put HB some areas that we put 4B and 2B all over the branch you're not erasing out those areas because the dark is not actually going completely over the lighter areas. With these soft foam tip blenders, uh, you can't press too hard because the foam will break and rip. But I've had these forever. They're amazing for graphite. But like I said, more so for the, the HB blends the best, in my opinion, because I can still see my, um, my, uh, my pencil marks. I'm just cleaning off my blending stump because I used it for charcoal last time. I don't want to get that. So I'm gently, gently, gently blending in those darker areas. The blending stump works very well for this but don't press too hard. Don't want to damage your page because we are going to be adding more graphite 
and ink and then erasing. Right now he doesn't really look very realistic, but he will. See what I'm doing with the blending stump down here? I'm sort of moving that dark color into his legs to make sure that it blends up a little bit. It may not be exactly what the reference photo looks like, but I like to blend it that way. But this is your drawing, so you can do it whatever way you want. All right. So now I have to decide how I'm going to give him detail. Before I do that, I've got my HB and I'm just gonna go in and very lightly fill in the entire area around him and around the branch. I'm not gonna do the entire page like that, but I'm just gonna fill this in because I'm somebody who, <laughs> I'm not minimalist, and um, I don't like to leave white blank paper or, you know, it just, I don't know why. That's Unless I'm doing like a Looney Tunes cartoon, I don't mind that, but if I'm doing an ink and graphite drawing or even a black charcoal on white paper drawing, I find myself feeling the need to fill in the background. <laughs> you don't have to. That's just me, my little obsession, I guess. So we can turn our pencils once in a while. And you see how I'm holding my pencil? I'm using the side of it. That kind of forces me not to press down too hard. I'm basically doing a rectangular background that goes all the way around the squirrel and the branch. I'm going to plug my um, my other channel right now. You'll have to excuse me, my, uh, my voice today. <clears throat> we lost power last night and it got cold in my bedroom. And um, when it's cold, I wake up sometimes with a sore throat or sneezing and both of those things happened this morning so I'm a little stuffy and my throat's hurting a little bit but what can you do all right I have plans in the next I have a long-term plan about a six-year plan I guess to be off-grid The, um, the electric bill is just ridiculously high and um, I don't use that much power, you know. And we lose power a lot here. I live in a rural area. There's no reason for it, but we do lose power a lot on perfectly sunny days. No wind, no issues. So it would be nice to not have to worry about that and it's very cost effective in the long run too. Okay, so I filled in the entire background. I'm gonna take, I'm, I'm actually going to take a different blender. I'm just gonna pause the video for a moment. I had this blender all set up with a sponge on the end, but, or a foam tip. I don't, I don't particularly like that one, so I, I just paused the video to set up a new one. It's more of a round tip and it's better for larger areas, so I'm just using that. And you could also use just a piece of toilet tissue or a paper towel or something like that to blend large areas. You don't have to use your blending stump. I mean, if you have a lot of patience, you could use your blending stump. But for me, large areas, I like these blenders. They're so much uh, more efficient. And like I said, you could also use a little bit of tissue the tissue though it um there's a lot of tissue dust after it kind of it's not it's not meant for a constant rubbing like that i don't think so 
but this is just to make the squirrel stand out a little bit instead of it being on a harsh white background it's a little softer and when I use these blenders I go one way and then I go the other way to try to erase as many of my pencil lines as I can and if you're noticing any kind of dust on your page just take your your little dollar store paintbrush and brush it away don't use your hands <laughs> you'll get it all over you <laughs> Before I bought my house, I lived, um, I was renting for many, many years. And I think it was back in 2003 or 2004 when I decided no more apartment renting. <laughs> I started renting cottages and houses in northern areas of, of uh, Canada. And the last rental I was in, uh, we found three baby squirrels in our basement. Somehow the mother had gotten in to make a nest, but she abandoned the nest and we found the babies and we nursed them until they were able to leave the nest. We had them for about two months. Here's a picture of a few pictures of them. We had to bottle feed them at first. They were so cute. We called uh, the three of them Algae, Spunky, and Frasier. <laughs> we were watching the Frasier series at the time, so that's why the third one was called Frasier. But they were so sweet. They were really, really sweet. Actually, what I should do is, um, I'll include a video here. What I did one day was I was baking bread, and the first squirrel that we found it was Algae. She was the female and she was so sweet and timid. I put her in my pocket to bring her downstairs with me so that I could take my bread out of the oven. So here's the video. Well, I just came down to take the foil off my bread because it has to bake for another 25 minutes. And I decided to do something. I'm in my bathrobe and in my pocket is algae. <laughs> She's just sitting in my pocket. She's so adorable. She's very timid. She's she's the timid one of the three. Hey, Algie, you have to stay in my pocket. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Isn't that cute? I was wearing my bathrobe and I just put her in my pocket. <laughs> as they got older though, they got a little more independent and not as cuddly and they wanted out. So, we brought a, a big cage out to the backyard and there was a small hole where they could get in and out and they explored, but they kept coming back to sleep there at night until eventually they, they were just gone. They came back to visit quite often and we knew it was them because the three of them came back together all the time and it was very sweet. Felt good to save them though. Okay, so I've got my background all blended. I'm taking my darkest graphite pencil right now, which is my extra black, be the equivalent of a 6B or an 8B. And I'm just gonna go around and I'm going to put in little marks like this to indicate fur around the whole squirrel. And I'm gonna go in the direction where the fur would be growing. So for example, above his nose here, he's actually got a very dark spot and it goes around like that. So I'm putting the lines in the direction where the fur would be growing like that. And I'm just gonna do that for the whole squirrel.
I'm doing it everywhere. <laughs> Even if you can't see it, I may go in with ink after and do, do the darker spots with ink. Now there are some lighter areas, like these areas here where we put the HB. I'm not going to use my 6B to put the, uh, the fur in. I might actually use the HB. I haven't decided yet. And his hair kind of comes out a little bit. A little bit. nose here he's got a little bit but I want to keep most of that light area the way it's meant to be light I just don't want to have you know a straight line because that's not the way the squirrel actually looks in reality you know, like if you look at a hand, there's a straight line here. But if you look at the paw of an animal, there's always bits of fur coming out. So it's not a straight line. And I am avoiding these light areas for now. very dark there's there's no actual fur on that that I can see it looks from the photo it just looks solid black so I'm just filling that in again with the 6b or extra black whatever you have same thing here When we first moved into this house, we bought a fixer-upper. We know that we knew that it wasn't in great shape, um, but somebody who shall remain nameless, <laughs> somebody who was kind of taking care of things for the realtor, um, left the basement door open. And when we got here, there was um, a squirrel nest embedded in that pink fiberglass insulation, which is just horrible. I hate that stuff. I really hate that stuff. And, um, but the mom was there. That was the thing, you know, the mom was coming in. But when we, when we got here, we obviously, we had to close our basement door. And, um, but the mom kept coming back and we felt awful, but we were afraid to leave the nest outside because it would be so vulnerable to predators. So what, when we found the baby squirrels in our basement that first time where we kept them for a couple of months because the mom had abandoned the nest, we did speak to a lady from a small animal rescue. And she told us that if we put the baby squirrels out in an area where the mom could see them, she would, 
because she couldn't get to her old nest, she would be in the process probably of building a new nest. And then she would come and one by one, she would come pick up her babies, pick them up with her mouth and carry them to the new nest one at a time. And we watched as she did that. It was quite something to see her picking them up one at a time in her mouth, running away to her new nest and coming back. And we were staying close. We, we put them somewhere that was very safe. They were under a stairwell, but it was where she could see them and hear them and smell them. So they were safe from predators, but they were still obviously there for her to see. And it was really neat to see that. I really liked seeing that. I'm just going over his little toes and fingers here, just to fill that in. Okay, so we've got a little bit of fur on him right now. I'm going to take my HB, that's my lightest graphite, and I'm gonna do the same furry thing where all the light areas are. But I don't wanna to press too hard. because HB stands for hard black, and it is a hard pencil. If I press too hard, I could damage my paper. And if I'm not happy with what I wanna do, and I've pressed too hard, it's gonna make it difficult to erase it. I'm just checking out my uh, reference photo here. I think if you're using an HB pencil compared to a 6B or a dark pencil, you'll see the difference in shading. Another thing that was interesting when we first moved here <laughs> was I don't know how long that basement door was open. Oh, that person was so irresponsible, but anyway, let it go rain. <laughs> um, we were sitting in the back room, just having a drink and watching the sun setting. And all of a sudden the porcupine came walking up through our backwoods on his way to the door. <laughs> You know, it was like, okay, after a hard day's work, he's going home. He probably saw that the basement was completely open and he decided he was gonna hang out there. But um, when he got there, obviously the basement door was closed. So he, he kind of looked a little confused and then went back into the woods and climbed up a big uh, pine tree and kind of hung out there for a while. felt bad taking his home away from him, but, you know, can't live with wildlife in our basement, unfortunately. <laughs> Not set up for that. Okay, so I've got my squirrel all nice and hairy. I'm going to take a um, um, cotton swab, and I'm just going to gently go over the areas that I added the fur, very, very gently because I want the fur to show, but I want it to be blended a little well, a little better, I mean. When you're blending fur or even hair, always blend in the direction of the fur. My heater is uh, ringing. I don't know if you were able to hear that. That kind of threw me off for a second there. It just started doing that. So we're really just softening the strokes that we put in here.
And again, this is really just a base that we're doing. We haven't even gotten into the detail yet, the, you know, the fine detail, because I want to be able to um, fix up his eyes and his ears and show where his neck is. And there are some darker areas on his body, like just above his nose, it's a lot darker. And we still have to fill in the detail for the branch. If your cotton swab gets a little too dark, you know, just switch it out or turn it. And you can blend it to your satisfaction. You don't have to blend it the way I'm doing it. If you want all that, all those uh, graphite marks to show, great. Just leave it as is. That's, that's what you want, whatever you like, because art is very, very subjective. What one person thinks is beautiful, another could think is trash, right? I guess that's where that saying comes from. One person's trash is another person's treasure. The point is just to relax and have a good time doing it. Okay. So I've got my little base there. Oh, I forgot a spot here. There we go. I mentioned before that I have a whole pack of these pigment liner, fine liner, black ink pens, and I've got uh, 0 0.05. It's probably not going to be in focus. Sorry about that. Um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. The 0 0.8 was this one that I was using. The 0 0.5 is the thinnest one. So I'm taking my thinnest ink pen right now and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in wisps of hair coming out of his tail. And if I find them too thin, like I do right now, <laughs> I'm going to go up in size to my 0 0.1. And I really am just looking at my reference photo and I'm putting in his tail hair and his tail hair continues beyond his ear down here. And this is where the wax paper comes in handy. So I don't smudge my hand on this, uh, on the, the graphite. Just when you're using ink, I want the tail to be behind the ear, so try not to get any ink inside the ear, because once you do, you, you can't take it out. Ink is pretty final. Okay, the top of his tail. And I'm just putting in, I'm going over one little area up here at the tip of his tail over and over on the same area because it is a little darker. Okay, you can see the difference between here and here. It's a little darker. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And his tail hair comes out a little bit behind this ear, but not as much as on the other side. So I'm just being very careful. I'm putting in a few areas, just a little darker. Because on his tail, he does have some kind of darker hairs. They're not all the same shade. OK, 
okay for now I'm okay with that and I'm going to let's see I'm going to take my darkest again my 0 0.8 and I'm going to work a little bit on his eyes in this area here where we filled it in with the dark 6b or the extra black whichever one you had I'm going to fill that in with the 0 0.8 ink and I'm outlining that eye again because his eyes are quite dark and I want them to show same thing with the other eye I'm going to be careful not to fill in that area that I wanted white here I accidentally filled it in a little too much so I should have left a little bit of white there but I didn't it happens <laughs> he's still gonna look great okay very dark there and this area that I left in there's a little bit of a dent area there okay now for his ear it's quite dark at the front so I'm just putting in some lines just at the front and then I'm gonna bring out some of that hair not very far just like that and I'm gonna do the same thing with this ear He's got some very dark areas here and I'm not coloring in. I'm just kind of putting in, you know, marks like this. And like I said, I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm going to go back to my 0 0.1 ink pen and I'm going to fill in the rest of his ear with just little marks because his whole, whole ear is dark but it's not all the same shade this one too it's all dark but it's not the same shade and while I'm at it I'm just going to go and put some some hair up on the top here Now inside his tail is quite dark. So I'm gonna take my 0 0.8, my darkest ink pen, and I'm gonna put lines in. I don't wanna color it in completely. And what you can do at this point is you can take a few small marks out from his tail. So that it looks just a little bit more natural okay now where else we've got to work on his nose I know I'm going back and forth between um, between ink pens but that's kind of how I do things <laughs> he's got this little area above his nose I've got my 0 0.1 by the way just above his nose here that's a little dark darker than the rest of his face and it kind of goes all around his nose and I'm bringing it up just a little bit and then under his nose here and just going down to his mouth right and just about here he's got a little bit of a darker area and here you know what I'm doing I'm going to show you something I don't usually do all the highlighting till the end but I'm going to show you there's an area here right around his eye that I'm going to erase right away because I want to make sure that I don't fill that in with any ink so I'm back to my 0 0.1 and I'm filling in just a little bit of hair
all the way around his face. And I'm going, my touch is very, very light, very, very light. Because we still have all those strokes that we put in with the pencil, but we're just kind of filling it in a little bit with the ink now. Very, very light touch. And I'm gonna stop here because he's he's got quite a light area here. Okay, so what I wanna do right now, I'm gonna take my uh, my 6B or my extra black and I want to make it obvious where his face ends okay so I'm just gonna put in a little bit of shading here where his face ends and I'm gonna take my cotton swab and just blend that so it doesn't look like a big old straight line there And I'm going to take my 0.1 fine liner. And I'm just going to put in some fur there. Just so that we can differentiate his head from the rest of his body. Okay. Now I'll take my darkest ink which is my 0 0.8, and I'm gonna fill in his nose. But watch how I do it. I'm gonna fill in just the left side. Like that. And then he's got a little sort of area here. For his mouth. Now I have a 0 0.05, which is a very, very tiny, tiny little point. And that's where I'm gonna fill in the lightest areas of his fur where you can barely, barely see. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that all over those light areas. And I'm not putting as much detail as I did with the pencils. Just a little bit to indicate the fur. And I'll go in and I'll take my 0 0.1 again and all those other darker areas, I'll just go in and fill those in with very, very random. I'm not, like I said, I'm not being as detailed as I was with the pencil at all. As I'm going along, you see these lines here from the stencil? I'm gonna try to erase those by putting some fur around them so they don't they're not so obvious that they're lines. Okay. I think he's looking pretty good. Now as for his eyes, I'm going to take, let's see, Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to take my 0 0.8 again, and I'm just going to outline this area here. There. It looks better. It's a little more outlined. And here I'm going to try to soften up that line a little bit by just kind of coloring a little around it. So it's not, you know, I don't want it to look like a solid black line. 
Now what we can do at this point is we can take our eraser, mechanical eraser, and wherever we want it to be white, we can erase. And I can also go in and I can put in some highlights. He's got a little light spot around his head on the top. And again over here. Under his nose here. A little bit of highlighting here around the side of his snout, I guess. Under his chin. Or on his chin, I guess. These areas here. This is why we put in a base of graphite, because we put the ink... We, we put in the ink marks, and they're going to stay there but we've also got a little bit of highlighting by taking away some of that graphite. That's why I love this, this combination. I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at where all of the lighter areas are on my squirrel. And I'm removing some of that graphite. Okay, so now I'm just going to wipe that off very gently. And uh, I'm not too happy with this eye. So this is just me being a little picky. I'm going to put in a little bit of that dark 6B color because I think it, the white is too obvious there. I think that's a little better for me anyway. I'll just blend that with a cotton swab. There's still a little bit of a white area there. And I'm gonna, that's a little too white for me as well. So I'm just bringing in some of the graphite from around just to make it a little less white. But the inside of his eye, I want that to be white for sure. I'm gonna take a new um, cotton swab. Just all the areas where I erased, I'm just lightly, lightly blending just so they don't look like eraser marks. They're still going to show up, but they're going to be blended. Okay, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with my squirrel. I may go in and put some details in there, but now I'm going to work on the branch right now. Now for the branch, I'm just going to go in and I'm taking my 0 0.8, my darkest pencil, and I'm just going to go in and do some scratch marks all over the whole branch just so it doesn't look like an outline really just putting in scratches my focus is the squirrel but I still want the branch to look somewhat nice <laughs> I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to get any ink on his paws. See how I'm just kind of scratching in there? I have to remember the area between his paws. This pen might be running out of ink. Yeah, I'm gonna have to switch to another one. Okay, that's a little better. 
I use these 0 0.8 fine liners so much that they just, I go through them so quickly. Okay, so I've just got that, you know, kind of scratched in there. I'm going to take my darkest pencil, my darkest graphite, which is my extra black equivalent of a 6B. And I'm going to go in and fill all of that in. Being very careful around his paws. I could erase if I make a mistake, but I always, excuse me, I already have that nice highlighting there that I don't want to mess up, so. Don't forget to turn your pencil once in a while. Let's not wear that down. And I'm going to take another cotton swab, just a dirty one, and just go in and blend that in. So now I'll take my 0 0.1 fine liner pencil and I'm just going in and I'm just going to put in some detail. Just, you know, some areas with a little bit of a shape like that. And, and the tree, I might just give it some interest, you know, some of these branches here, just a little interest. I'm not doing anything specific, I'm just kind of doing curved curved lines like that and making these a little weird looking okay now let me take a look is there anything else I want to do yes there is <laughs> I'm going to take my darkest 0 0.8 his toenails are quite sharp and thin at the ends. So I'm going to make those a little thin. There. Now, is there anything else I want to do? Let's see. I find that his body is a little, I don't know, is boring the right word? I'm going to take my dark 6B or extra black. And I'm going to just put in some shading, very light shading. Everywhere that it was dark before. Let's see if that makes me feel happier. I wonder what's bothering me here. Maybe it's the highlighting. Put a little highlighting underneath where his neck and where his head is. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I think that's what it is. There's not enough highlighting on him. It just looks he's, like he's got pieces of fur like that. So I'm just going to go in and put some highlighting. Try to make it look a little more natural.
what I'm doing at the same time is I'm kind of erasing my stencil lines. This is looking much better. I'm very happy that I started to do this. What was bugging me was uh, were the stencil lines. It just looked like too many patches, you know, a patchy area instead of just flowing fur. Let's see, I think that looks better. At least for me, it looks better. I'm gonna take um, just a dirty old swab again and just go over that just to soften it all up a little bit. To me that looks a lot better. Looks a little more natural. But you see here? Let me show you. See that line? That's what was bugging me. I don't want the lines to show. Some more line here. There. Let me just go and blend that a little better. There, that's a lot better for me. Okay. Now he does have some whiskers. They're very tiny. And they kind of go out here like that. And you can't really see them in the drawing, but I'm going to give them a few whiskers there too. Okay, I think I'm good here. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That was, a, that was a fun little drawing to do with ink and graphite. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm just going to sign my name if my pen will work. <laughs> If you have any suggestions for drawings that you'd like me to do for lessons, um, what kind of medium you'd like, because I do charcoal, I do coloring pencils, I do, uh, I paint, obviously ink and graphite here, I do white charcoal. I pretty much do a lot of different ways to draw and to paint. So if you're interested in anything, just leave me a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I would love to see what you've done if you want to get in touch with me and let me know what you've done. Every Thursday on my blog, rainfrancisart.com, I host a weekly art date. It used to be a themed art date, and in fact, this drawing was for this week's art date, and the prom prompt was leaves and branches. But I decided to make the prompt optional because I know a lot of people... A lot of people do like the challenge of a prompt, but some people don't. They just, they can't, it doesn't fit in with their style of art. So I've changed that from now on. So if you'd like to share your art, just visit rainfrancisart.com. There's a link widget there. It's open for a whole week and you can share a link to your blog for the artwork that you'd like to share with people. It's a fun little community that we have. So thanks again for watching, my friends, and I really hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Bye.